To be a black woman is to be superwoman, always strong and unbreakable. We've seen the image throughout history. Yes, for, from Harriet Tubman to every black woman, but we know how detrimental that stereotype is. In 2017, suicide was the second leading cause of death for African Americans ages 15 to 24. And nearly 10% of black women say they feel like everything is an effort, while over just a little over 5% of white women say the same, and that's according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Here to, here to discuss this is CEO of Crown Counseling and Consulting and Therapist Janetta Garrison. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's my pleasure. Glad to be here. So just tell us about some of the services that you provide. Well, at Crown Counseling, I provide individual counseling. Um, I also provide relationship therapy and group counseling. Um, I'm also doing public speaking to get the word out and spread awareness about mental health and wellness in general. Mm -hmm. And what inspired you to get into this profession? What inspired me? That's a great question. Um, I, I think from the time that I was young, people have always felt comfortable just talking with me and telling me things. And I've, al I've always felt like um, I kind of had the role of nurturer and caretaker. So um, I thought, well, let's make a career out of it. So um, I went to Florida a and University and got my psychology degree in undergrad. And I have a master of social work degree from Florida State and I'm a licensed clinical social worker. So basically I just wanted to help as many people as possible, um, especially people that look like me who are struggling a lot, but don't often feel comfortable seeking therapy. Mm -hmm. That's a very important point because we see stars like Taraji P. Henson kind of pulling back the layers as far as mental health in the black community because yes. quite too often we, we struggle with mental health and we tend not to speak to someone about it because we're struggling to find someone who looks like us mm -hmm. who can relate to our struggles as well. Right, that's true. Um, a lot of times we we do have this ideal of wanting to be the strong black woman. So there is a sense of shame that that is attached to mental health, mental illness, depression, anxiety. It's like, well, I should have it all together. I should know how to do this because no one else around me is struggling. Why am I the only one struggling? So when you're looking for someone, often you look to seek someone that reminds you of yourself, someone you feel like you can relate to. Um, so that, you know, that we don't, we don't have very many African-American therapists compared to the general population, but there, there are a lot of us. We are out there in large numbers. We are out there, um, but maybe in a person's particular city, they might may not have quite as many options as in a larger city. Mm -hmm. And why do you think that in the black community, it is kind of taboo to talk about your mental health? Because I remember when I was younger, my mom would always tell me just to put on my bootstraps and like be a big girl and keep on moving. But uh -huh. sometimes that doesn't always work. Exactly. Right, exactly. And I think it goes back to exactly what you said. We start to socialize our children very young about what it means to be a black woman, a black man. Um, you have to be strong. You have to be able to be independent. You have to be able to keep it all together. And if you don't fit into that mold, you feel like something is wrong with you. So I think it really the conversation should start with children and adolescents to let them know, you know, if a little boy is upset, it's okay for you to cry. Mm -hmm. You're not less than if you cry. If something is bothering a teenage girl, it's okay for her to be upset about it and to receive that reinforcement that, you know, you don't always have to be unbothered, so to speak, by things. You can actually be upset and, and voice your opinions. Mm -hmm. Well, based on your experience, do you think depression impacts black women differently? Yes, 100%. It, imp it impacts us differently because um, a lot of times, a lot of the clients that I see, for example, they have to, they feel that they have to maintain this mask of the strong black woman who has it all together, right? Mm -hmm. um, you look great, you feel great, you have the perfect family, perfect marriage, all these different things. You, you have to um, basically play that role. And if you don't actually feel that way internally, 
you you get to a place where you sort of are wearing a mask, right? So not only is it exhausting to keep up this role of who you not you who you're not really on the inside, um, the original hurt of what's going on is also not being addressed. So you're sort of doubly struggling, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yeah, I feel like that can speak to a lot of women out there. Mm -hmm. Well, depression is much more than just being sad. So for those that may not know what depression or anxiety looks like, can you tell us what that is? Right, that's a great point. Depression is a lot more than I'm being, I'm sad, I'm crying all day long. Um, depression and anxiety can look like you're more irritable than usual. Um, maybe sometimes people can be forgetful. You sort of forget things like why you're late to appointments or you're late to things because you just, you lose motivation. Um, you get confused, you have trouble sleeping, your appetite changes there. You can have um, increased or decreased appetite, um, sex drive changes. There can be a lot of different changes that, that take place. The important thing is to be in tune with yourself and in tune with your body to know when something is not in alignment, when something isn't right. So for example, if you're normally the social butterfly and then for a few weeks or months, you find yourself turning down invitations and isolating and just saying, I would rather just stay home. That could be a sign that you are dealing with depression or anxiety. So again, just pay attention to yourself and pay attention to your body and what's going on and trust yourself, trust, mm -hmm. trust what's coming up for you. I like that. All right, we're going to continue this conversation after the break with Janetta, so please stay with us. We'll be right back. Still joining us here is CEO of Crown Counseling, Janetta Garrison. Again, thank you so much for joining us, talking about a very important topic, mental health. So at what point, you know, as black women, again, we are taught to be strong and, you know, to just realize like, hey, you can get through it. But at what point is it important for us to see, hey, you need to get help? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Um, when it starts to impact your daily life, uh, you know, a lot of times we are programmed to push through and push past and struggle. So we could be suffering with depression or anxiety a lot longer than we need to be. But when really when it starts to impact your daily life. So for example, if uh, one of the symptoms I mentioned earlier was forgetfulness, so if you're working and you're finding it difficult to focus at work or at school and you can't complete your task as you normally would be able to, or your performance is suffering, these are signs. If you can't sleep, that's often the first thing that people will notice. If you're having trouble going to sleep at night, sometimes people say they, they get in bed and they just toss and turn and toss and turn and they can't sleep. You know, it's important, don't just push through and say, well, I can make it on three or four hours of sleep. No, your body needs to rest and recover. So really just focus and pay attention on what comes up for you. If you feel like you need some help, reach out for some help. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people talk themselves out of therapy several times. They may think, I'm gonna go talk, talk to someone, I'm gonna go see a therapist and then they talk themselves out of it for whatever reason, you know, whatever reason, um, because of the stigma, because of not wanting to be appeared as weak, things like that. But if you find yourself struggling, seek help, it's okay. Or if someone says to you, if a loved one says to you, you know, I think you may wanna talk to somebody. If you feel like that's coming from a place of love and support, listen to that person and do what you need to do to take care of you. Mm -hmm. What is some work that we can do as black women within ourselves to help us realize that it's okay not to always be the strong black woman in the family, to accept that it's okay to be vulnerable, it's okay to realize that I'm dealing with depression or anxiety or other mental health issues? I think the main thing is to be authentic and genuine with yourself first and with your village you know, the people around us, when we, how many of us, if, if someone says to you, hey, how are you doing? You just say fine and keep going. And you're not really fine. You know, you're not fine. You haven't been fine for a while, but you just say, I'm fine and keep going. And if this question is coming from someone that really loves you and supports you, they may actually want to know how you're doing. 
So start with those honest conversations. Be honest in those moments and those opportunities to let other people know, you know, I'm not, I'm not great. I'm not, things are really not good right now. You never know what someone else may be going through too. They can, they can relate to what you're saying. They could say, you know, I have been struggling too. Let's talk about it together and find, you know, find that safe space, find your sisters, find your tribe and lean on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think having that support system, because my sister, she's actually just became a social worker and she tells me like, Hey Lauren, you know, you need to go get a therapist. And I am that person that keeps putting it off and putting it off because mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm fine today, but you're not always going to be fine the next day. You know, you have to be true to yourself. Exactly. And I also think it's important to just reach out to a friend mm-hmm. like Lauren may come to me. I may see she's acting different or her mood has changed. I'm come to her and say, Hey, is everything okay? Right. So just having that support, like you mentioned, having that tribe. Exactly, exactly. Have that tribe. You know, a lot of times people may know a lot of people, but their tribe may be one or two. You know, you can know a whole lot of people, be connected on social media and know hundreds of people on there, be the social butterfly. But who is really your tribe, your support network? That's one of the first questions I ask every client that I speak with. Who is your support system? Do you have a support system? Do you feel like you can truly talk to these people that you need? You know, you can talk to me, I'm your therapist, but you still need your support network in place. And it's really important to support one another and let people know it's okay to struggle. It's okay. You may be struggling now, but you won't be struggling forever. I got you. I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Well, being a black woman yourself, how has your journey helped you to counsel others? Well, you know, as a therapist, we always bring ourselves to the sessions, right? So wherever I go in the world, I'm a black woman. So um, I, I can relate to some clients on a different level just because of that. Of course, my practice is not exclusive. I have clients who are not black. I have clients who are not women. Um, but when someone is seeking a therapist, Oftentimes they look for they look for themselves a little bit in their therapist or they look for someone they feel like I can really relate to this person. So just the idea of, you know, we're speaking about being strong. um, I've definitely felt that way that I have to be the strong one. I have to be the one that's the caretaker. I have to be the one to make sure everything is okay. And, you know, you can get by doing that for a while. It can be your motivation for a while. But after after a certain amount of time, it just builds up, right? It builds up. And it's like, okay, at what point am I going to take care of me? Or I'm taking care of everyone around me. Who's taking care of me? That can be another question that people ask themselves. Who's taking care of me? Um, if I have people that take care of me, do I feel comfortable letting them be that for me? You know, just being being true and be being honest and being authentic so this has been a journey for my for me as well just to be authentic be authentic within myself and that helps me to connect better with my clients because it's I'm not just saying things I'm not just playing a role I'm actually living this life as well Mm -hmm. I will say I've noticed our generation kind of shifting their perspective when it comes to mental health and speaking with people even in my network of friends we are more candid as far as talking about how we feel if we're not having a good day week or month we're Mm -hmm. being open and honest like you said with one another so that it's really helpful I would say yes so what are some first steps that a person can do if they notice that they're struggling to keep it all together The first steps you can do is, um, you know, like I said, lean on your tribe, talk to your tribe. If you feel like you want to talk to professional, you can speak with your primary care physician. physician. Um, That could be a resource. You can um, look for a therapist. There are a lot of therapy directories online, or you can even just search, just Google search therapist and and plus your city and see what comes up for there. Mm-hmm. So how can people get in touch with you? I just love talking to you today. It's made me feel better know, just by definitely. this small conversation. So how can we get up with you? So, thank you so much. Uh, well, my practice is called Crown Counseling and Consulting. I'm located in Charlotte, North Carolina. My 
website is uh, crowncounselingandconsulting.com. And you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram. All right. Thank you so much. This was a, a needed conversation. Yes. I feel touch and it's I, for the viewers. It really is. I, feel, I always feel like that happens, but it, it uh -huh. reminds me even for me, you know, I was raised to just be the strong one. You know, I was raised by a very strong black woman. So we both were. So I think it's just one of those things where you really have to talk to yourself and be like, you do need help. And it is about really looking at yourself because a lot of times we are the caregivers. We are the people giving other people help, yeah. but we need help as well. And it's just reminding me that I need to get a therapist. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you so much for this conversation. We definitely appreciate you. Thank you.